follow the interview after Leslie Mufuke and also after the performance. But you know we're gonna make it work. How are you doing? I'm cool. Hi everybody. <laughs> I'm cool, but let me know this. I get nervous before I go on stage. Why? I don't know. It's just the pressure. Everyone makes me so much, but I'm a whole lot still. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I interviewed you actually was in the thickness of lockdown. So it was over the phone. We couldn't do the interview here because the restrictions were just there. Nah. Yeah. So it was actually good to actually see you in person and to do this in person. Appreciate um, so big ups to you in your journey that you've taken so far. So you're going to be dropping an EP on Friday. It's fine. Good city, bad roads. Yeah, I'm so, uh, that's the name. <laughs> give us a little bit of a, a breakdown on the name of the EP. So, you know, coming from Pretoria, I feel like I just wanted to say I'm from Pretoria without making it too apparent. And also the music that I made in the EP kind of reflects that message. So it's kind of about growing up in a good environment, but being pushed to go in the streets and live a different life from what you expect it to be if you go on me. It's interesting that you mentioned um, that you grew up in Pretoria because I, I think a lot of people all are assuming you're from Johannesburg, especially because you're signed to stand up. So it's dope that you know, you're bringing a different element to the camp. But outside of that, a lot of the influence that is coming through on your EP as well as in uh, the single that, you, that you've been pushing has got a UK drill influence. Can you give us a breakdown as to why you decided to kind of take that direction? Because if anybody listens to Skanda, we, we listen to Das, we listen to Skanda, we listen to, you know, Makara Kara. But you're like, no, let's take this thing overseas. So I think the thing with my music is, um, I grew up very urban, if I can say, listening to anything and anything. So the way I understand certain songs or certain styles, so a drill, a drill song sounds, I hear it with a UK accent. So even the way the music came, it's not even like I was trying it. The way I made the song was just with the accent. So now I guess it kind of carried on with everything, but even making my music myself, I'm not held back by language, I'm not held back by accents, I like playing with accents, tones, sounds, voices, so sometimes I'm singing, sometimes I'm rapping, but for the most part, the UK thing is just something I really enjoy, because I can do it, and apparently people can't do it, so I'm just doing what I can. <laughs> That's true. Um, and of course, rolling with the camp, rolling with kind of world, um, just, you know, give us a... Give us a picture of how everybody kind of fits into the camp because I feel like everybody kind of plays their part. Everybody's got a role that they need to kind of put up on and uh, how do you feel your role kind of fits into that? I think being the youngest, I have the pleasure of being the experimental one, right? So you got K.O., he's, I mean, K.O. <laughs> and then you got Mr. X, my E, those are older guys as well. Then we got Loki and Just Biggie, my two favorites. So Loki is a Vanag Zulu rapper to some extent. So he, he, if you look at him and you look at K.O., it makes sense, right? And Biggie is a Afro-pop, if I can explain, artist. So even him, it's kind of what makes sense. But my privilege is because I'm the guy from Pretoria, and I'm the youngest, I kind of I kind of add what's missing, if I can say. I kind of feel like I'm just putting a light on what could be instead of just what is already. That's dope. And I think at a time where, you know, hip-hop was also trying to, you know, uh, work its way back up, trying to get its, uh, its place back into uh, the dance music scene, because, I mean, everybody can see what's happening right now. I'm a piano, I feel take, every, everything is kind of, you know, skyrocketing. How do you think you can influence hip-hop right now to kind of make people pay attention? You know I'm the kid that did the drill thing in South Africa? Okay. <laughs> so, how great can I be is the question, right? I'm not holding myself back. I don't dream small, I dream extreme. So, let's let's see how the drill goes. We still have to give drill, it's only the beginning. You know what I'm saying? There's a long way to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, all right, I love that, I love that. You know, uh, with, with hip hop it's always about confidence, it's always about trying to take yourself to the next and believing that you are the best in the game. So if you didn't have that type of answer, I would be very worried. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, obviously with this being your first official project, there's a lot of pressure. 
that comes in with the first project because this is how people are gonna see you, this is how they're gonna remember you, this is how they're gonna take a journey with you. They're gonna decide whether they're going to be with you the whole way or whether they're gonna be like, ah, this guy's a chancer. What can we expect from the EP? Fun. I'm having fun as a kid. I'm 21 years old and I think the biggest thing about Tom and Monto is that never forget you're just a 21 year old. So the people that listen to my music, um, you will enjoy it because you'll see I'm 21 and I don't know what I want to do. You know, I wake up one day and say I want to be a rapper. Is that the sound like the most straightforward answer? So with the music as well, it's just me having fun. And I'm also showing what else I can do because people think I can just I just make your music, but I got the Afro pop going on in there. I got the traditional hip hop. I got the deep drill. I got the light drill. So I'm, I'm just having fun most of the time. That's dope, man. That's dope.